So, thank you very much. My name is John Round Turner, and I am the Sales and Marketing Director for Abercrombie & Kent East Africa. And it's going to be my pleasure to just go through um, a little bit of the migration in terms of where to stay and when. It's a question that we often get asked, and I think we can try to help you guys understand and, and, and hopefully sell a little bit more of, um, of A&K in East Africa. So what we'll do... is we will sort of be using our trusty migration map uh, as a basis of, um, uh, of what, what I'll do today. So what I just want to go through is sort of I'll take a, I'll choose a time frame and then we'll just go through a number of properties that are located within that sort of catchment area for the migration at that time of the year. I want to use this opportunity as well to be able to um, dispel a few myths that A&K is totally incapable of operating um, anything at less than the five-star deluxe, which um, I heard relatively recently. Um, so I want to dispel some myths. So there's some properties in there that you may not know. Um, what we've done as well is we'll make sure each property has the rack rate for the time of the year that we are suggesting. Um, again, I want to make it really as easy as we, um, as, we, uh, as we possibly can. All right, so to that end... So we're going to start off down in the southern part of um, Serengeti National Park. So December all the way through to March. So this is wildebeest carving season. About half a million calves are born in about a six-week window. Generally end of Jan um, through to the middle of, uh, or starting middle of Feb. Um, and then all the way, about six weeks worth of, um, of, of sort of birthing activity. And you get to see... Yeah, about half a million of these cute little little creatures. Now, of course, when you get so much prey animals, you get a lot of what we like to call the good stuff that comes out. So your, your chances of seeing um, some rather exciting big cat action is greatly, greatly increased. So I'm going to start off with the first property. It's called Ndutu Under Canvas. Technically not in the Serengeti, but it's in the Ngorogor Conservation Area. But as you can see, it's in that little triangle there, and it's definitely, definitely right in the heart of the wildebeest migration, especially December and January. It's 10 tenths. It's very much a mobile um, product in terms of look and feel, uh, but it ticks a lot of very good boxes in terms of location, and budget. I think you'll be quite surprised as to when we get to um, when we get to the budget. But it's a very very good product um, for that um, for that price range. So three hundred and fifteen dollars is the rack rate per person per night sharing on full board, and that so that's between January and thirty first of March. Just so you can understand how we've uh, how we put all the slides together. So the next one is the Sanctuary Cassini property. Um, located on the sort of western side um, of the southern part of Serengeti, if that makes sense. Um, again, a fantastic location, especially in this in this time of the year. Very often, the wildebeest migration actually comes through the camp um, on a number of occasions. So you're really in the heart of all the action. Um, what I also like about being here is the opportunity to do a little bit more, slightly different sort of safari. We call it the cosmic safari because the managers down here are um, very interested in the stargazing. Um, so they, you know, with a, with a really good guide, they can really give a client a, a, an extra sort of edge to the uh, to the safari. And the other thing as well I like about um, the Cassini property is you can help out with the Serengeti cheetah project. So you can help identify um, a lot of the uh, different. Um, uh, cheetahs that they've got going on there, which I think is a very important part of uh, uh, part of conservation. But yeah, there you can see the rack rate at 790, and that's all inclusive. Um, also, while I'm at it, talking of sanctuary, sa sanctuary have the migration camp, which moves throughout the Serengeti, um, depending on the time of the year. So January, February, March, it'll be located right on the border between the Serengeti National Park and the Ngorongor Crater Conservation Area, and then. After that, so April, May, June, it'll be located um, quite close to the Grometi uh, Game Reserve, and then it's located on the northern part of the um, National Park, 
come July through to probably the end of October. So it's well for, versed in um, in location, and you can see it's 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 based on the um, the A and K mobile tented camp that we still do in Kenya, uh, but we've just made it a little bit more seasonal in Tanzania. So again, a great opportunity to get right into the heart of heart of the action. And a fantastic property located in the Mazwa Game Reserve, which is just to the south of Serengeti. Called Mwiba Lodge. Beautiful property. It's absolutely glorious. It's in the same vein as your Singitas of this world. Built on the edge of a cliff with amazing views, not only across the Game Reserve, but you can also have views into the Serengeti as well. We conducted a recent farm trip there and it went down incredibly well with all the people that we had with us on the farm trip. Quite a lot of activities to do, as you would expect of such a high end property, um, including my favorite is night game drives. It's a great way of being able to see uh, sort of the good stuff in action. Um, Pretty steep rack rate, as you can uh, as you can see from there. But it is a great, great property for your high end clients. It's definitely of the Singita vein. Right, so that's sort of your January, December, well, December through March time of the year. So I just want to move on to April, May, and June. Traditionally, <laughs> rainy season. Um, great thing about the rainy season is slightly more exclusivity in terms of it's not so busy. We have a wonderful thunderstorms, which can provide some amazing. Uh, backdrop for photos. I love the fact that when we have the rains, um, I always feel my photos are much more clearer because there's no dust particles in the air because the rain brings them all down. Um, and the grass is absolutely glorious. It's, a, it's a, such a vivid green. I mean, I don't know if I am, um, I don't see it, sort of see it in uh, too many other places. It's just that beautiful colour. Um, so yeah, on average, about 40% lower um, than peak season, which I think is a great opportunity for, uh, for people to take advantage of the really well-priced safari. Here you can see that vivid, vivid green in the bright light. Please don't get confused that <clears throat> the rainy season is going to rain all day, every day. That's not the case. We may get rain overnight, early morning, then it clears up, we get the sun out, um, and it may only rain two or three days on the trot, and then it'll be clear for a week. Uh, so just please uh, do bear that in mind. You've got people who are um, wanting to travel at that time of the year. Don't put them off because it's the rainy season. Sell it as a, it's a it's a different way of looking at our um, our landscape in a, in a very vivid, very beautiful um, environment. So we'll start off with Mbuzi Maui. So Mbuzi Maui is the Swahili word for clip springer, which is a very small antelope that spends all of its life living in in rocks. So again, it's a great product for a certain price point. It ticks a lot of boxes. It's only got sixteen tents. Uh, which I really like. It's in a very, very good location. Not actually just for this time of the year, but it's also in a pretty good location for year-round um, wildlife, um, year-round game viewing, because it's sort of like almost on that edge of that central Serengeti, uh, Serenera region. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a product I was um, lucky enough to be at in January this year, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a great um, uh, opportunity to to get out in that central part of Serengeti, um, hike up and down the copies see the clip springers in action, and then also throw in some Swahili language skill uh, lessons and some cooking lessons, which I think is fantastic. So as I said, low season, you get a fantastic rate. I can't remember what the rack rate for this property would be in peak season, but it's certainly three or four times um, that figure. So $143 full board, I think it's a very good price. The central, um, uh, back in central Serengeti, the Katikati camp, Sort of, again, it's a similar sort of mobile setup, um, which I quite like, but it's quite small, 10 tents. I mean, they're really nicely done inside in terms of everything you need, nothing you don't. Great dining room, great views. And a really good rate at low season, $260 full board, uh, full board is the rack rate there. So, again, a Pretty good price point for that property. 
the other property I really do in, uh, enjoy is Serengeti Pioneer Camp. It's really got this nice 1920s vibe going on, which I think is fantastic. I do, I do love. They do a great job uh, down there. You can see you've got the copies in the background. Opportunity, I mean, Leopard, I've seen Leopard up there. I was last, uh, uh, last visiting the camp. So it's a great, uh, great property. Love a pool, especially come the, uh, come the hot season. It's a great opportunity to jump in, uh, jump in the pool. The low season rack rate is 650 per person per night sharing. And then I wanted to end with the Four Seasons uh, in Serengeti. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, but there are definitely clients out there who suit exactly this property. They want to have their air conditioning and they want to have their satellite television and they want to have a, a nice pool table and sommelier coming around and taking wine orders. Um, so yeah, please also uh, don't dismiss it out of hand. It's still a fantastic property. It's still in a good location. Um, being a permanent sort of a lodge bricks and mortar structure, you know, in the rainy season, um, when it does rain, you don't have to worry too much about uh, water coming in under the tent flap, which I think appeals to quite a large number of people. And I would also highly recommend their Discovery Centre. They spent a lot of time and effort on it, actually, and it's very, very interesting. Again, I was there in January this year, and, um, yeah, we spent a good hour um, down in the Discovery Centre, and I actually really enjoyed it. Great for kids. I think it's worth pointing out. It's got a fantastic kids club. So if you've got people traveling with children, um, it's a great place for them just to relax and let the kids get on and, and have some fun. Price point, all inclusive. It depends on the room category. They've got about six or seven room categories, maybe, maybe a few more. Um, but yeah, it depends on the room category that you want. I stayed in the terrace suite um, when I, on my last trip, and I, I thought that was fantastic. You get a little plunge pool on the on, on the deck outside with great view overlooking the um, uh, overlooking the watering hole. Uh, so yeah, do bear that in mind as well. Okay, and then we have, of course, the Singita uh, properties. There's quite and there's four properties within. There's five properties if you count their tented uh, under canvas. Uh, product within the Grometi Game Reserve itself. But I'll just mention um, Singita Sasakwa with all their different cottages and villas. Really cool place for if you've got a multi generational family and they want to take um, you know the whole uh, bedroom villa, the four bedroom villa, um, or or even more than that, then this would work um, incredibly well. As you can imagine, being a Singita property has stunning, stunning views over the whole of the uh, Rometi Reserve. A whole range of product, um, activities to do. This is only part of it. I think this is probably one of the few places you guys can get a, an opportunity to sell some archery in Tanzania. Pretty steep rack rate, but we all know that. We all know what the city properties are like. So I move up into July, August into the Masai Mara, Northern Serengeti Masai Mara. We really like to sell this. This is the great opportunity for these, you know, river crossings. Uh, this is where they predominantly happen uh, in the Masai Mara. Lots of permanent water there. You can see the steep sides of the banks. Um, so this is just a, a few wildebeest. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to see um, somewhere in the region of about five or 6,000 crossing at a time. And it is pretty amazing to see. So I want to start with a property that many of you may or may may or may not have um, may not have heard about. It's called Mara Rianta. It's not that new. It's probably been up four years now, um, right on the river. But it's a very very good property. It's got twenty units, um, so the price point is going to be very very reasonable indeed. Again, it's got a pool which is perfect come uh, the hot times. Also great if you've got children. I mean, I know my. My kids are never happier than when they're jumping in and out of a swimming pool. Great place to do the hot air balloon from. And this is peak, peak season for Kenya, Tanzania. So the rack rates, this is the highest that they'll be. So $425 all inclusive. I think it's actually a pretty decent rate. Sanctuary on the Nana. 14 tents. I know that they've just re finished redecking their entire public areas. 
um, which I think um, I haven't seen it yet. I think they only finished last week. But as soon as I get back down there, I'll be able to have a look and um, and see what we're doing. So yeah, great location right on the edge of the Mara River. Um, another thing to bear in mind with my, um, Central Anana, I really like their philanthropic um, uh, part of what they do. They've got a great village visit at the top of uh, Anana, which is not too far away. Um, and they've got this tree cut food planting um, program as well. So I think clients, you can buy a, clients can buy a tree for $15 and it's named and it's then looked after. And I think the, the moment is always, this is the cheapest way to buy land in Africa. One of my most favorite properties, Mara Plains. Seven glorious tents. Well, the other thing I love about it is um, they've got a box of camera equipment that you know clients can use um, as and when they're there, and it's very, very good. I mean, I'm always a little bit jealous of the lenses when I uh, when I go down there. So it's a great, um, uh, great property. They have another, another one called Mara Toto, which has been washed away and is in the process of being rebuilt. And as soon as that is opened up, then we'll. Um, We'll, uh, we'll let everybody know. But a really cool location right on the edge of the, the, the National Reserve itself. Great views overlooking the Ololulu Escarpment. Um, one of the steepest price points in Kenya, but it's just a fantastic property. I highly recommend it for people who, uh, who are in that price bracket. Definitely worth a visit. And then for the other time that the uh, migration is in Kenya, in the Maasai Mara, Mara Leisure Camp, it's, it's definitely three and a half star product. Um, this is their family tent, which is two large uh, bedrooms joined with a lounge, which is so it's great for families. Simple, very simply done. Nothing fancy. It's got 32 units, so it's relatively large. But again, suits people on a budget, people with children. I know for facts that traveling with children is incredibly expensive. Um, I have three of them. So, um, yeah, if you've got people who want to travel with children, then this is a, a, good, op a good option for them. The location is actually very, very good in, indeed. El Caliani, maybe another property that you may not be that familiar with. 17 tents, so sort of, sort of halfway between small and, uh, and medium-sized. Very nicely decked out, but a good option for that sort of August-September time of the year as you can see the price point is very very decent indeed Tipilikwani um, again right on the Talek River nicely done 20 tenths slightly more upmarket great again great for kids got a fantastic pool some cultural visits there there's a lot of different activities that can be done and again a really really good price point And then we start going up a little bit on uh, level of um, on price points. Cotter's 1920s Safari Camp. Um, it's in its own little private conservancy, which I absolutely love. Uh, it's uh, just just a beautiful, beautiful property. This 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 is 1920s elegance at its absolute best. It's only got ten units. Um, great lounge, well decked out. The hosting is absolutely first class. Calvin Cotter. Um, is a fantastic host. He's a third generation living in the Maasai Mara. And he, what he doesn't know about this part of the world is is really not worth knowing. The other thing as well is they've got a private bush house, has five bedrooms within the house, so a fantastic op opportunity for uh, your multi-generational families to have exclusive use of a whole house. And that's bricks and mortar property. Um, the cultural visits is also very well done at this property as well. So I'm just sort of winding up October and November to complete the circle. Um, November time, Central Serengeti is also a great location for clients as well. So Buffalo Luxury Camp works in October time as well as in November. 15 tents. We've had some fantastic feedback about the quality of the food and the hosting uh, from this property. It's a simple, simple property, nothing too flash about it, but just very nicely done. The hosting is also fantastic as well. Because it's just, just outside the Serengeti National Reserve, National Park, you have that opportunity to do some cultural visits as well, some Maasai visits, which I think is quite cool. Something you don't really get to do when you're in the heart of the Serengeti. 
If anybody has questions now is a fantastic time to type them in because I'm just going to wind up with a, my last few slides. Namiri Plains. Namiri Plains is a relatively new property. I, mean, I think about 18 months uh, it's been open. But what, what I love about it, it's in this eastern part of Serengeti that's really not been used very much in terms of for, for sort of tourism activities. It's been closed off to do a lot of cheetah research. Um, and Namiri Plains is the first property that's in that area. And it's owned by a um, property company called Acilia. They do a fantastic job. So it's quite modern, um, but it's... What I love about it is it's in that area where uh, the game is just that little bit more skittish, a little bit more wary of, um, uh, of, of vehicles because they haven't had so much uh, access to, uh, to vehicles um, as other parts of the, um, of the Serengeti. Some great dining options if the weather's nice, it's sitting outside um, or inside. But as you can see, you've got this wonderful, wonderful plains. Um, great cheetah country. This is the most fantastic cheetah country that you'll find in the sound getting and you have an opportunity to do um, assist with that cheetah research you're marking down uh, all the different cheetahs that you see you submit your photographs um, and you just trying to help uh, conserve the cheetah population as much as we can that's it from me we just want to go through the upcoming webinars that we've got we've got a focus on kenya um, so it's all about kenya various different parks and properties and the logistics of getting around and then after that, the Ngorogoro Conservation Area and the activities that you can do in that area. I think it's important to get people out of the vehicle. So focus on Kenya, 20th of April, and the Ngorogoro Conservation Area and its activities on the 18th of May. Please don't hurriedly jot down all those uh, uh, web links. Um, a, they'll be on the recording, and B, they will be on the follow-up email that you get um, having subscribed to this webinar. Now is a fantastic time for questions, so guys, get your questions in, and I'll be delighted to answer them. Okay, guys, thanks. Um, huge number of questions, which is great. Um, Cusini Camp, is February a better chance to see the migration or January? Um, both are very good times, but if I had to choose, I would go with February. Um, Weaver Lodge, when was it opened? Um, Weaver was opened, I think, about 18 months ago. Yes, it's an alternative to Cusini. It's a higher level than not Cusini. It's almost twice the level. Um, they're in quite different areas. Weaver's in, uh, in the Maswa Conserve, uh, Maswa um, Game Reserve, uh, which is borders um, the Serengeti. Cassini is in a sort of an area with rolling plains and a few rocky outcrops, whereas Weber is in a much more, um, a much more rocky, much more hilly, much slightly drier part of the Serengeti ecosystem. The first property I mentioned in the Mara. One second, let me go to my notes. I can't remember what it's called. Yes. It's called Mara Rianta. Mara Rianta. What is the best area to stay for August and September? I would definitely say Masai Mara is better at those times than, um, you know, if you're looking at maybe June, July, I would say Northern Tanzania or the Masai Mara, but definitely. August, September, Masai Mara is the best uh, place to be at that time. That's not to say that you can't do the um, both Northern Serengeti and uh, Masai Mara, but if I had to choose, I would go with Masai Mara. Um, the name of the sanctuary camp is Sanctuary Olanana, O-L-O-N-A-N-A, -N -A -N -A, Sanctuary Olanana. Okay, of the properties I reviewed in the Masai Mara, which areas, which are the properties located in, in less congested areas? Um, so that would be um, Sanctuary Olanana, Mara Plains, and Cotter's 1920s. Those are the three that are in sort of own private conservancies. Um, so they don't have such a high density of, um, 
uh, other vehicles around there. Sorry, the price is full board and all inclusive. So full board is everything's included food wise, um, but not game drives. Uh, they will probably be done in our vehicle with our driver guides. Um, all, all inclusive is everything's included. And if you generally clients would fly in and they would do game drives in the camp vehicles. The first 1920s style camp I mentioned was a Serengeti Pioneer camp. It's in the it's in central Serengeti. Um, I the, the somebody's asked if they can recap the presentation in an email. Um, the web uh, this webinar is being recorded, and you will be sent a link for the recording. Um, in order to cross from Tanzania to Kenya. Do you still need to fly back via Arusha? That's absolutely not the case anymore. You can go through the Isambanya border, which is between Serengeti and the Lake Victoria. So it's on the western side of Serengeti and Masai Mara. Um, I will send you a little bit of an email privately about that, just so you are uh, you have it on in your mind. Um, that's it for questions. So if anybody has more questions, please do type them in now. I think that's it. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope I've been able to give you a little bit of information. Um, if not, then please do let me know. Um, I wanna give you guys the tools you need. So if there's any webinars you guys particularly feel that you need, please give us a shout, we're here to help. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Have a very, very good day. Um, my, my day is done, I'm in Nairobi now, so it's uh, half past seven in the evening. So guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all very much indeed. And we look forward to having you and your clients out in East Africa with ANK in the not too distant future.